armed. So with the top target out of the way, what will it mean for campaigns in the other theatres of war like Afghanistan? Our defence editor Mark Urban reports. Even if the US government has long shied away from talking about the war on terror, the fact remains that huge resources are still being pitched against Islamist extremist groups around the world. Indeed, the strike against Osama bin Laden offers the counter-terrorist people to strike further blows in that struggle. The coup here of capturing bin Laden undoubtedly creates a lot of opportunities. There will be a lot of material collected at the site cell phones, laptops, all kinds of media that will be exploited. We'll learn a lot of clues about what's happening next. And also, I think it uh, probably will set off a certain fractiousness and argument within Al-Qaeda about where they're going next, a struggle over both leadership and future strategy. So all of those things are good for us. The compound in Abbottabad, where the Al-Qaeda leader was killed, has already become a local attraction. Pakistani forces had raided it in 2003. A war of words now rages about whether they did or didn't help America pinpoint it for yesterday's mission. But Western intelligence officials insist Pakistani agencies didn't and are likely to exploit this failure in their private battles with those organizations. We've seen uh, in the last few weeks uh, the issue of Raymond Davis, the CIA contractor, being arrested, uh, used by ISI as a way to try and close down CIA unilateral operations that they were not happy about. Uh, and obviously they had a certain amount of success with that. Uh, this latest uh, episode, uh, to a significant degree, I think, turns the table. But what about the wider struggle? against the Taliban in Afghanistan. The White House denied today that bin Laden's death could have any effect on the planned drawdown of US troops there. But Downing Street was keen to stress this might offer a chance to push forwards with disengagement. Our strategy towards Afghanistan is straightforward and has not changed. We want an Afghanistan capable of looking after its own security without the help of foreign forces. We should take this opportunity to send a clear message to the Taliban. Now is the time to separate themselves from al-Qaeda and to participate in a peaceful political process. While politicians don't want to miss an opportunity, professional al-Qaeda watchers worry about everything, from retaliation to spin-off movements to their own budgets. While some politicians and bean counters might get the idea that this is the perfect opportunity to declare game over on the so-called war on terror, the world's key intelligence and counter-terrorist organisations are determined to resist that kind of argument. They need to protect their establishment and budget, of course, but even allowing for the fact that they may suffer cuts in the coming years, their view is that Afghanistan and Pakistan will continue to be their prime focus. I think the focus will remain very much on Pakistan and Afghanistan. We need to bear in mind that it's not just uh, al-Qaeda. There are lots of uh, groups in both Pakistan and Afghanistan that uh, have the potential to cause problems. Although I think it's important to add that it's really only al-Qaeda itself that's shown a disposition uh, on a serious and sustained basis to try and uh, undertake uh, terrorist operations outside that immediate uh, theatre. In Pakistan today, there were those who turned out to mourn and honour Osama bin Laden. This banned militant group staged a prayer event. Inevitably, the counter-terrorist agencies will fight their corner against those who argue it's time to move on. I don't think there's going to be any serious uh, endeavor, any serious effort to cut back on counterterrorism here. I think on Capitol Hill and in the administration and certainly at the CIA and other intelligence agencies, there's a rich appreciation for the fact that uh, Al uh, bin Laden may be dead, but al-Qaeda is not. Uh, also, we have to worry about the affiliates of al-Qaeda, particularly those in Yemen and uh, elsewhere, places like East Africa, who are undoubtedly have plans on the shelf to carry out future operations. 
the abundance of continued threats and opportunities created by yesterday's raid mean there'll be no let-up soon in the struggle against terrorist groups. But in the longer term, the mission is bound to lose focus and perhaps resources. Now it's lost its bogeyman. And Mark's uh, still with us here. Now, did we, what, what did we learn more about the raid today? Well, as you mentioned at the start of the programme, the fact that uh, Osama bin Laden was not armed when he was shot. Now, some of the briefing yesterday suggested that he was armed. Uh, and uh, the fact that he wasn't came out in a White House briefing. This is what the president's spokesman said. Bin Laden and his family were found on the second and third floor of the building. There was concern that bin Laden would oppose the capture operation, operation rather, and indeed he did resist. In the room with bin Laden, a woman, bin Laden's, a woman rather, bin Laden's wife, rushed the U.S. assaulter and was shot in the leg but not killed. Bin Laden was then shot and killed. He was not armed. Now, of course, that version, in addition to undermining the idea that he was resisting in an armed way, also undermined the idea that he tried to use his wife as a so-called human shield. Now, the other interesting thing that came out today was from an ISI, a Pakistani intelligence source, who told a fellow BBC correspondent that the Americans had taken away a live captive from the compound, believed possibly to be one of bin Laden's other sons. We don't know if this is true, but it's clear that there is all manner of exploitation that will come from this raid that we don't yet know about. Uh, what about the pictures of bin Laden's corpse? Well, the pressure's been on again today for these to be released. I, I think the general view is that, uh, that it would cause as many problems as it would solve in terms of trying to stop the doubters from, from mm. casting doubt as to whether he'd really died. Uh, from what one can understand, he was shot in the head uh, more than once, and it may be that a good deal of his face and what would recognisably make him Osama bin Laden has literally been blown away. Mark, thank you very much. Uh, well, with us now from Washington is Michael Chertoff, who served as Secretary of Homeland Security under George W. Bush. Uh, Mr. Chertoff, would you release the pictures? Well, you know, based... I haven't seen them, obviously, but based mm. upon the fact that the report was he was shot in the head, I think, I think your correspondent is probably correct. Uh, there'll be insufficient uh, basis to actually make a conclusive identification. Those who don't want to believe the DNA evidence will continue to disbelieve it, and it'll merely feed the fire of people who object to the operation. So it probably, on balance, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Where do you think this leaves the uh, American and other countries deployed currently in Afghanistan? Does it make it more likely they'll come home sooner? Well, again, obviously this was an important milestone uh, in a long journey, but it is not the end of the journey. We know that operationally, the planners and the operational leaders at al-Qaeda have been people other than bin Laden. I mean, Alaki, for example, in Yemen. Uh, Mullah Omar is still obviously uh, somewhere in Pakistan. So uh, to declare victory prematurely is like leaving a football match in the middle of the match and thinking you've won. If there are still more, is more time to run, you could find yourself in a bad situation. So I don't think this is a sufficient basis to revise the strategy uh, in Afghanistan. And where do you judge that al-Qaeda is strongest now? Well, it's an interesting question because we've heard a lot and we've seen some evidence in the last year or two about Yemen as being the new focal point for al-Qaeda. We've also seen evidence of al-Qaeda uh, in North Africa, what they call al-Qaeda in the Maghreb. But I think what the events of the last couple of days illustrate is that the core or center of gravity of al-Qaeda still is in South Asia, Pakistan, Afghanistan. And that's why prematurely pulling out of the area would not only uh, let up the pressure on al-Qaeda, but would also actually create a more dangerous situation for both Afghanistan and Pakistan itself. But doesn't what we've learned about the capture of uh, bin Laden indicate that uh, there could be any number of other terrorist leaders hiding out there and uh, the Pakistanis either wouldn't know or wouldn't tell? Well, that's absolutely right. First of all, we know that there are other groups like Lashkar and Toiba, which uh, are in Pakistan, which have had close relationships with al-Qaeda. There's an Uzbeki group that also has close relationships with al-Qaeda. So we, we by no means have established, uh, or disestablished, I should say, al-Qaeda from Pakistan and Afghanistan. And that's why I think uh, continuing to keep the pressure up, 
exploiting whatever media were picked up in the House and acting quickly upon that intelligence will be critical uh, moves in the next weeks and months. And as a former Homeland Security uh, Supremo, um, what's your judgment about the likelihood of some sort of retaliatory attack now? I think it's reasonable to be concerned about it. Um, obviously, we've always been thinking about the anniversary, uh, uh, the 10th anniversary of 9-11 as a potential marker for a follow-on attack. Now, if you are al-Qaeda uh, and bin Laden has been killed and potentially some of the planning for that that he may have had in his house has been captured, that may prompt you to accelerate your, your operational activity, or there may simply be a desire to retaliate in order to send a message that al-Qaeda is still very active and, and very dangerous. So again, without suggesting that there's any information about a particular imminent specific plot, it's prudent in the next period of time to raise our level of alertness. Michael Chertoff, thanks for joining us. Thank you. My pleasure. Now, the most shocking exposure we in